All right. After a train wreck of trying to get this live stream going, we are live, I think. Let's straighten the camera out a little bit. It's a little better. All right. So, welcome to the second Trafish Aquatics live stream. Um, had a little bit of technical difficulties getting this whole thing set up because YouTube lost my original live stream. Um, I went to go click on it to hit the start button, and it wasn't even there anymore. So I had to make a new one. So hopefully I left the link on the old live stream to the new live stream. So hopefully you guys will be able to get there and find it to get here. Um, so let me know if you're having any video or audio issues at all so I can try and correct them before we get too far into this. And uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the YouTube live stream, go ahead on the right-hand side. There's a chat. You can chat there. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, go ahead and put it over there. I'll go ahead and leave a chat over there right now. No, I did not. So currently outside, as per Pennsylvania protocol, it is 4 o'clock. That means it is the time of day when uh, Mother Nature is about to unleash the craziness of every rainstorm we get every day. Because um, that's just the way it is. Um, all right. So video and audio is good. Just want to make sure before I start talking and then nobody can hear me. So a couple things I want to talk about. Uh, channel hit 1,600 subscribers. I think it was yesterday, which is absolutely awesome. Okay, cool. It's working. So uh, thank you guys for go ahead and subscribing to my channel, and I really do appreciate that. The channel's never really been about subscribers or how many people I can get to subscribe to the channel. I'm just a hobbyist. I don't have – I know a lot of people ask me a lot, you know, do you have a store? Do you sell online? Do you have a website? And I don't. I'm just a hobbyist. I'm a guy with a bunch of fish tanks who uh, struggled to learn about all the information that he wanted to uh, learn in the hobby and to try and make it easier for everybody else that's struggling to learn. I decided that I wanted to make a bunch of videos, put them on YouTube to try and help people. Um, and the channel's doing pretty good because of that. So uh, I'm really thankful for all you guys who constantly watch my videos and come back to keep watching my videos and uh, stick around on the channel. So uh, today we're going to be talking about the story of me, Travis Aquatics. And for those of you who don't know, my name is Travis. Um, I know I really don't say that much. Um, but basically what I'm going to be talking about today is my story of how I got into the hobby and how it progressed through my life to what it is today. And it is raining like crazy outside right now. Lightning and thunder. Okay. So I apologize if the stream goes out. If I lose power, I'll try and get it back up as soon as I can. So um, we're going to go ahead and start. So if you guys have any questions about anything, go ahead and drop a question in the comments, and I will get to it. So... Um, my hobby probably started back when I was around eight years old. Uh, my parents went out, and I actually, I don't remember if it was my parents that got the aquarium or if it was a gift from somebody else, but it wasn't even mine. It was, my brother had a one-gallon little boat front aquarium, and he got it for either his birthday or a Christmas gift, and it was set up in this little plastic one, and it had a shipwreck in the bottom with a scuba diver built in as like the, the escape that was in it and i think there was like five neon tetras in there and i don't know why but i was really drawn to that and i thought it was absolutely amazing that you could have fish inside of your house and it was really cool you got to feed them interact with them a little bit and i kind of took over taking care of it and this was probably when i was eight years old so I thought it was really cool, and that was the most of the aquarium stuff that I did when I was that age. And we had that tank for years. And after that, 
I don't remember how I got it, if my parents bought it for me or if somebody gave it to me, but I got a 10-gallon aquarium. And it went through multiple fish. It went through some bettas. It went through some tropical fish that I would get. Um, and then eventually, one of my parents' friends had five convict cichlids that they wanted to rehome. And they gave them to me, and I put them, they were all maybe about an inch long. I put them in the um, 10 gallon tank. And at this point, I might have been 13 years old. And the, the convict cichlids, they did okay. You know, they definitely needed a tank that was bigger than that, but I didn't know that at the time. And they, uh, they eventually started dying off because at that age, I didn't really know how to take care of things like that. And it was just, it, I was new, right? So eventually it came down to, there were only two left and they started breeding. And I was getting fry probably weekly. I was getting fry and there was a couple hundred fry. There was a lot of them because the, the two cichlids that were left were quite large. And that kind of got me a little bit back into it of wanting to learn how to take care of them and how to take care of the fry. And the tank wasn't big enough to hold an established breeding pair like that. It's not even big enough for one of the fish really. And they would constantly eat the fry. So I decided that I wanted to get a, uh, a larger tank and I was looking into it and it, it really wasn't feasible, being that I was young, didn't have any money, my parents couldn't afford to go out and buy a tank for me. So I kind of just let it go. And uh, one of my best friends came over to my house that I had been hanging out with at school and everything like that, who is actually currently my wife. And she came over and saw that I had this 10-gallon tank sitting in my dresser, and she's like, wow, that tank looked really dirty. And I was like, yeah, you know, there's there's a couple fish in there, I think. And she's like, there's fish in that? So I went over and looked, and the fish were in there, but the tank was pretty dirty. So I went and I, um, I cleaned the tank and made it look really nice and pretty and put plants and stones in there and made it look good. And then it got me back into thinking, like, I need to get a bigger tank for this. So there was a lady that I worked with. This was a couple years later, um, who had a 20 gallon aquarium that she wanted to get rid of. So she gave that to me and the convict cichlids moved into there. They started having fry again. And then the male ended up dying off. And I had this female convict and she was all colorful and she'd come up to the glass and she'd open her mouth and scrape it against the glass. Every time I walked into the room, cause she would just follow me around and that's just the way she was. And I thought that was really cool. So I had that 20 gallon tank for, probably two years and then the convict cichlid ended up dying and at this point in time i had these convicts for probably about six to seven years and i really didn't know what i wanted to do with the tanks anymore i wasn't sure if i wanted to continue in the hobby or if i wanted to just stop and i decided that i would go to the pet store and walk around a little bit and see if i could find any fish that I found interesting that I would want to put in this tank to get myself back into the hobby if I really wanted to continue at all. And I went to, I believe it was PetSmart, and I saw the Oranda goldfish. And I stood in front of that tank, and I stared at these fish for probably 20 minutes. And I'm looking around like, man, those are just really cool-looking fish. And they were the bigger ones. They're the ones that if you go to PetSmart, they're like 30 bucks. And I'm looking at them, and I'm like, boy, that's really cool. So I bought one. And I brought it home and I put it in the tank and they're super interactive and they come up to the glass and they swim around, they'll come up and they'll rub up against your hand when you put your hand in the tank and stuff like that. And I thought that was really cool. So I started looking into the fish a little bit and it turned out that they were not suited for a tank that size. I needed something bigger. So I went back to the pet store and I was looking at 55 gallon tanks, 40 gallon breeders and things like that. And they were way out of my budget. I had just got a job. I was just started working. I wasn't bringing in a whole lot of money. And for what a tank and stand and lights filtration and everything inside, for me to shell out that kind of money at that time really wasn't feasible. So I went home pretty bummed out. And I'm like, you know, I feel bad because he's in a small tank. And 
you know, it's kind of my fault for putting them in there. So I had to do something. So I went online and I found a website called Craigslist. And I went on there and I found a gentleman selling a 55 gallon aquarium, tank, lights, stand, all the medications, all the foods and everything like that. And it was a pretty much turnkey kit, get it, set it up, put your fish in it and you have everything you need. So he was selling it for 125 bucks. I called him up and said, you know, can I, can I come get this tank off of you? And he's like, yeah, sure. So I went on a website. Now, if you guys are younger that are watching and don't know, um, Google Maps on your phone was not a thing. Smartphones weren't a thing then. We were just getting into the flip phones that didn't even have cameras. So we went on a website called MapQuest, and you had to print out directions to wherever the address was, and then you had to manually follow these directions to get where you need to go. And it was about an hour drive. So I drove out, met the guy, purchased the tank off of him, put it in the truck, and brought it home. And when I brought it into my bedroom, I remember setting it up on the stand and looking at it and looking at the tank the fish is in and going, where am I going to put this enormous tank? So I had to rearrange my whole room, set the tank up. And as soon as the tank was set up, I moved the fish in there. And I know now that you shouldn't do that because you have to establish a nitrogen cycle in a tank back then. I did not know. So I moved the fish in there. And tank got cloudy. It started to smell bad. I was changing water out just because I didn't like the smell of the tank. So at that point, I looked it up, and that's when I found out, like, why it was smelling like that and that I had to learn about the nitrogen cycle and uh, all that stuff. So I got him in there. Tank got cycled. He made it through it, fortunately, and um, I decided I want to get some more goldfish. So I went out and got another fancy goldfish. I got a couple common goldfish. I put them in there, and that tank looked awesome. And that's what really what brought me into the hobby more were the goldfish that I had in this 55-gallon. And it really sparked me down the road of being a hobbyist. And the next tank I decided I wanted to go get another one and set up a tropical community. So I went back on Craigslist, found a guy selling a 56-gallon marine land. And I went out and bought that tank and brought it home set it up, got a whole bunch of uh, tropical community fish going. Hey, gnarly fish tanks, what's going on? Um, I got it set home, set it up, and I got some tropical fish, put it in there, and, uh, you know, I was really enjoying it. And then I went back to the store one day, and I, I don't remember what I was looking for, but I saw um, an albino tiger out there and i was like man that's really cool it was in the tropical section and i got it put it in the tropical tank and you guys probably already know what happened from there uh, slowly my fish started disappearing until only the oscar was left and that's just one of those things there's a learning curve that that's how i learned that don't do that so i got that tank set up the oscar was living in there my goldfish were my 55 and it was at this point that my wife and i were in college we we're working multiple jobs and we ended up getting married and renting an apartment. So the tanks came with me to the apartment. Nothing really changed. We were there for about a year and a half and uh, we ended up buying a house. So when we bought the house as a gift to myself, I went out and bought a uh, 125 gallon ensemble from PetSmart. So I went out and bought the 125 gallon tank, brought it home. We moved into the house, set it up, I moved the established filters from the 55 onto that tank, moved the goldfish in there. Um, the 56 gallon uh, kept the Oscar in it, which she wasn't really big at the time. She was only about maybe five inches. So she stayed in there. And then, um, you a blank. The 55 gallon got set up as my wife's bearded dragon tank. She really wanted a bearded dragon. We got her one of those. The tank was set up for that for a while. And we kind of had a plateau of what we were keeping and doing for probably two to three years. Um, in that time period, I decided I wanted to build a thousand gallon pond. Um, so I went out and I bought some supplies, built a thousand gallon pond out in my yard. And all of my goldfish, uh, the common ones anyway, went out to that tank. Uh, I didn't have any fancies left at the time. They were all common goldfish. So they went out to the pond. And my Oscar went to the 125 gallon. And that's kind of how it was for a while. 
The Oscar lived her life in that tank. She was in there for about another three years. Um, and then she got up to about 14 to 15 inches, and then she ended up passing away. I had her at this point for probably eight years. Um, she passed away, and the 56-gallon tank that I had, I didn't have fish in it for probably six months. And one of my friends at the time was really starting to get into the hobby. He had a couple 10-gallon tanks. And I decided, you know what, man? I know you're looking for a bigger tank. Take it. You know, just have this 56 gallon, get some enjoyment out of it, and do with what you know what you will. And he was like, "Are you really sure you want to give me that?" I'm like, "Yeah, man. Tank, T5 lighting, stand. You got a, a fluval, you got a 405 canister filter in there. I'm like, just take it and enjoy it." So he took it home. He set it up, did a whole planted tank. I helped him get it going. We went down to the river and got some stones for it. Set it all up. It looked awesome. So at that point, I really only had the 125-gallon tank. I went out and decided that I want to get some more fancy goldfish because I really liked them. When I first got into the hobby, you know, I got a whole bunch of them set up in there, and it was it was just awesome. I love fancy goldfish. I love orandas and stuff like that. And that's how that tank was for a while. And there was kind of a lull where that's the only tank I had, and I wasn't really doing anything. I just had my pond and my tank. And that was it. And then, um, let's see, probably like that for a year or two. And then uh, one of my wife's friends was looking for a tank for one of her snakes. And she went out and got a 75-gallon tank. But what she didn't know is she was looking for a 75-gallon regular aquarium, but she got a 75-gallon long from a gentleman for free. And... She couldn't use it because it was too narrow for the snakes to be able to turn around. So she asked me if I wanted it, and I said, yeah, free aquarium, right? So I got the tank, brought it home, and it kind of sat in my room for a while because I wasn't 100% sure what I had to do with it. The silicone didn't look that great. So I did a lot of research, did some, watched some videos, and learned how to reseal an aquarium. And that was the first tank I ever resealed was that 75-gallon long. I also ended up, when I was watching the videos, um, one of the people said that you have to remove the top frame if you want to get a true reseal because you can't get the silicone up under the frame. And I ended up breaking that. Now, a lot of you probably don't know what a 75-gallon long is. It's a 6-foot long aquarium, 21 inches tall, 13 inches front to back. So it's like a 55-gallon, but it is uh, 2 feet longer. So... The company that made that was All Glass Aquariums, which is now Aquion. But if you reach out to these companies and try and get frames for these tanks, it's hard enough to get a 55-gallon. A 75-gallon long is just out of the question. They don't make those tanks anymore. They haven't made them since the 80s. Um, so I had to be a little creative with the way that I was going to get this tank back up and working. So I actually built a frame for the top of it out of wood. I sealed it with a poly and... Uh, siliconed everything back on, resealed the tank, and that tank's been up and running for about a year and a half now. And I had that tank set up, and I decided, you know what? Um, I think I want to build a fish room. And that kind of got put on hold a little bit because we found out that uh, my wife was pregnant with our daughter. So we decided, okay, I might not be able to build a fish room because now we need to change our house a little bit to um, incorporate room for our daughter. So I ended up taking the room that I was going to build the fish room in. We split it in half, and my daughter got a bedroom on one side, and I got my fish room on the other. So we kind of compromised a little bit. And it was at this point while I was building that out, one of my coworkers had a friend that was getting rid of a 55-gallon tank. His wife had just left him. It was her stuff, and he just wanted it gone. So I went up to his place. I picked up a 55-gallon tank, two fluval canisters, a whole bunch of stuff, and uh, I brought that all home. And that's really what kicked off my wanting to build a fish room. And it snowballed pretty quick from there. Um, so I ended up getting more 55, more 20s, 29-gallon tanks. And I just said, you know what? We're doing this. And I built all the stands for them. I built all the... Um, the double stack stands, I, I've got videos on everything that I've made in there. Um, resealed all the tanks, made videos on that. 
And a lot of the videos that I was making was because I couldn't find in-depth enough videos to what I wanted to learn on how to do these things. So that's why I decided, you know what, I'm going to make these videos because I can't find the information I'm looking for. So I'm going to make the information I'm looking for. So that's where um, the premise of making the videos and making the YouTube channel. And I was just kind of uploading the videos like every couple of weeks I put a video up because it wasn't something that I wanted to do every day or every week and make multiple videos and all kinds of uploads and things like that. So it was just a casual thing. And the channel really didn't have a name at that point. I wasn't sure what I wanted to even call it. It was just getting uploaded to the Travis Stevens YouTube channel. And I sat down one day and I said, you know what? I think I kind of want to do this a little bit more. And I wanted to actually move forward with the channel itself and try and actually do something with it. So I sat down and I'm like, I was trying to figure out, like, do I want to call it, you know, Travis's Aquariums? Do I want to call it Travis's Fish Room? You know, because I wanted it somehow involving my name and then the aquariums or the room itself or something. And I couldn't come up with anything. And I remembered that my dad uh, always used to call me Trafish because I would always have the aquariums and I was doing stuff with that, as well as uh, we go fishing a lot. So he had called me that a couple times. And I was like, you know what? I kind of like that. So it stuck and it just rolled with it. And that's how Trafish Aquatics was made. And we titled the channel that. And at that point in time, we probably had nine aquariums set up a couple 55s the 75 of like a 29 a 20 long a 10 and two 20s and the 125 and i kind of rolled with that for a while and then i started looking into getting some more tanks so i went out and i picked up some other free tanks built more stands got more fish um somebody gave me a free pond so i did the video on the ponds and stuff and i built this uh better rack behind me so my wife wanted to keep some bettas, and I wanted to look real nice and in our kitchen. So I built this better rack. And some of my videos on my channel at that point started gaining a lot of traction. And I believe that's where most of the people who actually subscribe to the channel um, are coming from, are those videos that have gained a lot of traction. Some of my videos have 18,000 views, which in the big scheme of things, that's really not a lot. But on my channel, it's a lot. So... I believe that's where a lot of the viewership is coming from. And it really motivated me to want to go out and make more videos and be more creative and do more DIY things. And it's really helped me to learn more about the hobby as well as teach others about the hobby. And that's, it's really what drives me forward to want to create more content because people really enjoy it and i enjoy teaching people and being able to everybody learn as a whole and that's what i really enjoy about the hobby is nobody can ever know everything and everybody's going to be able to learn something from somebody else and that's really how the channel got started it started off with me having just one tank and then it just snowballed into this giant i have a fish room and I've got 25 tanks running, 10 more in the garage. I'm doing aquarium repairs. I'm breeding fish, selling them to the local fish stores, making money that way to support the hobby. And it's, it's a form of enjoyment for me, and I really, really like it. And uh, <laughs> my wife is asking me to talk about the aquaponic system. I did forget about that. The aquaponics system, I actually got involved with wanting to learn how to grow uh, food with aquaponics. And if you guys don't know about aquaponics, the way it works is you have a large tank of fish. You feed the fish. The fish produce waste, which is then converted from ammonia to nitrate. And the nitrate, as well as other nutrients that are uh, exported by the fish, uh, feed the plants. The plants use up all those nutrients and provide clean water back to the fish. So um, 
I had that set up for probably a couple of years, and I'll tell you what, that that system grew food plants, especially cucumbers and radishes and broccoli. It grew them extremely well. So I am thinking about setting that back up and doing a whole series on um, maintaining an aquaponic system, as well as trying to set it up indoors so people can try and do that for themselves as well. So... Yeah, she's also trying to convince me to set up tanks um, and just do a video of, like, a relaxed video and just have uh, nice common music and just a video of the tank for, like, five minutes. So if that's something you guys would be interested in, go ahead and leave a comment either in the live chat or after the video is done, leave a comment down below. And let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in. If it is, I can make it happen. Um, but, yeah, overall, that's how... Trappist Aquatics started, you know, I uh, started off with just a couple tanks and brought it right up to having a whole bunch of tanks. And, you know, I'm just a hobbyist that wants to teach other hobbyists how to do it. So I think that's pretty much it for my story. So if you guys want to ask questions or talk or anything at all, go ahead and let me know and I can answer some questions for you guys. Um, or if there's any other story parts that I'm missing, I will go ahead and think about it and I'll bring them up here in a second. But, um, I saw we had like 10 people in here, which is honestly more than I was expecting, you know, considering this wasn't really planned out well. I had the technical issues in the beginning with YouTube losing my stream. So, can you have an eel since snakes are no? Uh, maybe. Um, that one that you were looking at earlier, what was that? It was a goby, wasn't it? Um, that's saltwater. So that's something that I was considering setting up. I was thinking about setting up a saltwater tank. Not 100% sure um, what size or where I'd be able to do that, but it's definitely an option. Saltwater attempt, yeah. Yeah, saltwater is something I've never ventured into, and it doesn't seem like it's overly difficult as far as just maintaining the salt levels. So, uh, breeding what? Yep, that's true. Um, so, we did... Uh, sell some of my convict cichlids, about half of them. Um, one of the local fish stores reached out and said, hey, I need some convict cichlids. Do you have any? I said, yep, I do. Um, so I brought him down. He wanted 25 of them, so I took him 25, and we actually exchanged them. I gave him 25 convicts, and he gave me a bunch of uh, giant danios. And actually, they're not giant danios. They're regular danios, but they are quite large. Um, uh, variety of females and males so I can start breeding them and I'm actually going to do a little bit of an experiment with that between um, breeding them inside in the aquarium and breeding them outside in a pond to see which one does better see if it's more beneficial to do it in a summer pond or if it's just the same amount of work to deal it in an aquarium indoors so we're going to try that out and we're going to see how that goes um I did have some plans in the future here for building a new fish room. I know I didn't really talk about that too much. So the fish room I'm in right now is only about 14 feet by 9 feet. And if I really wanted to expand on that a little bit because... I wanted to have auto water change, and that's something that I didn't get to set up in this room. So I wanted to set up auto water change. So originally the fish room, I wanted in another room in my house, and that room I would have been able to do that, but unfortunately it didn't work out. I had to put it in this other room. But now I'm actually going to be able to move the fish room back to the area and actually make that room larger so that I can expand on the fish room. We can add more tanks, do some more breeding projects, 
um, and uh, expand the fish room and make some more content. So be able to set up a central air system. So I'll be able to show you guys how to do that. I'll be able to set up the auto water change system. So I'll be able to show you guys how to do that. Um, as well as just getting different kinds of fish in, get multiple species of fish breeding. And in the end, it would be really awesome if I could open a store. Um, though it wouldn't be able to happen where I live now. It would have to be somewhere else. But that would be super cool if I could do that. I don't know if it would ever happen. But it would be really cool to do that. Um, yeah, do the whole construction series on rebuilding a new fish room. Yeah, that would be something. So, we go for 30 minutes now. What's going on, Rob? <laughs> Actually, surprised to see you in here. Uh, I think I have one video on easy aquarium plants. Um. It's an older video, though, so I could definitely do some more videos on some plants, um, talking about different plants, requirements, and lighting. So I could definitely do that. Um, I got some more projects coming with some shrimp. Once I'm able to get the shrimp from Dustin. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Something else that's pretty interesting, too, is since the start of the YouTube channel, there's been a lot of local people actually reaching out to me for assistance and help. Um, I actually got the opportunity to meet a local subscriber to me a few days ago. And, hey, what's going on? And he actually, he needed help resealing an aquarium, and he actually reached out to me asking if I could go out and help him um, reseal a tank for him because he had a 15 gallon tank. He had gotten a 40 gallon tank, but when he filled it up, the brace broke on it. He got a 37 gallon aquarium, but when he filled it up, it was, he didn't like the way it looked and the size and the, uh, the stand that it was on didn't look great. So I went out, I helped him, I resealed the tank for him. And in return, he actually gave me those aquariums. So now that's added into the amount of aquariums I have waiting to get set up. So I have probably 10 more aquariums just waiting to get set up. And I'm kind of lenient on setting them up currently because I know I'm going to be expanding in this other fish room. So I'm not sure if I want to set them up before I build that or after to save me a lot of up and down work. Um. Yep. If any of my subscribers are Pennsylvania residents, we do have a local Pennsylvania group um, that we've made, and um, we've slowly been gaining traction there, and we don't really have a lot of Pennsylvania aquarium, I don't want to say groups or anything like that. The hobby itself is not overly large here, and a lot of the people that do have stores mainly focused on um, African cichlids because for whatever reason, the cichlid community here is absolutely enormous, but the amount of stores is low. So I try to stay away from the, the cichlids because I know it's a very big thing here and it's very mainstream. And I'm trying not to go down the road of mainstream um, as far as the fish keeping hobby goes. I prefer tropical fish, uh, goldfish, and planted aquariums. So that's kind of more my uh, direction that I'm trying to take it. So, um, but the group has been active. Uh, lots of advice being given out. Um, and a lot of trading uh, as far as equipment, tanks, uh, plants, uh, no live fish because Facebook doesn't allow the sale or trade give away anything of live fish like that. So can't do that. But as far as equipment and stuff goes, everything's been going well. 
So super happy for that. Super happy for my channel itself has been doing really well. Um, like I said, we hit 1,600 subscribers the other day. And actually the amount of views that I get from subscribers versus just in general is only about 7% coming from subscribers. And um, that actually shows me that a lot more people besides just subscribers watch my videos, which is good. Um, but I imagine that number of subscribers would be higher if I actually asked people to subscribe, but I don't. And even though I've watched multiple videos saying that if you ask people to hit the subscribe button and stuff like that, you have a 30% more chance of having the people subscribe because you're actually influencing them and putting the thought in their head to subscribe. And I don't do that. I don't like asking people to subscribe um, because I don't like when I watch videos and they ask me to subscribe because it, I don't know, it just bothers me. Like, if I like your stuff, I'm going to subscribe to you. So don't drive it down my throat. You know, I don't really appreciate it. So that's just my, my way of thinking. So that's why I don't ask people to subscribe because if you like my content and you like the stuff that I'm making and if you like me, you're inherently going to subscribe anyway. So, and even if you don't and you just watch my videos, you know, I appreciate the video watching and, you know, stopping by and checking out the channel. So, oh, yes. Also, um, there is a fish store down in South Texas where I'm quite popular, apparently. Um, one of my friends that I talk to every now and again on Facebook, um, she lives in South Texas and she went down there and this, the store manager was talking to her about uh, Trapfish Aquatics and how he recommends uh, the videos that I make to his customers for learning how to uh, set up aquariums and for beginners and stuff like that. And apparently I'm pretty popular down there, which is kind of strange to me, um, being that I'm famous somewhere that I have no idea where it is. So, uh, <laughs> Mickey, uh, it's a shout out to you a little bit. So, so out of curiosity, who all is actually in here? I know Mariah and Rob are here. Yeah, right now there's only five people watching, but it keeps going up and down between five and ten. Um, so it does show me how many people are actually watching it, um, which I didn't imagine there would be a whole lot of people watching it because the channel is actually quite small. Um, but what does happen is once this video is done, the, uh, the video actually saves and then just uploads to YouTube so that it can be watched in the future as well. Technically, it's my second live stream. I actually did a live stream quite a while ago for uh, building one of my stands. So I built a stand out in the fish room, and the whole time I was building it, I was live so I could talk to people. So technically, this is the second stream. Um, and it was just the story of you know, how I got started and what the channel has become. So... Nothing overly crazy, not a overly popular topic because I'm just talking about myself. So I imagine any live streams that I get to do uh, later on are going to be a little bit more popular because I'm actually going to be talking about um, specific fish and uh, just specific topics that are within the aquarium hobby to actually draw some more people and hope for them. live stream exposure yeah million subs yeah no not 
I want to shoot for 10,000 first, you know. I don't want to get too crazy. Oh, Expos. Actually, yeah. So I don't know if it's still happening or not, but this year it got canceled because of the coronavirus. But there is a an aquatic experience, not the big one that's usually held in Chicago and New Jersey, but there's an aquatic experience that's a little bit smaller. It's a privately held one in – boy, I can't remember. It's out where Aquatic Guru is. I can't remember where he is, though, off the top of my head. It's like – I think it's Wisconsin. Minnesota, that's it. There he is, out in Minnesota. So I don't know if that's still going on next year or not. Um, um, but if it is going on next year, I'm going to fly out, and hopefully me and Dustin are going to set up a table. And if uh, – Mike Terrell from Off the Deep End Aquatics, he might come out. But we'll see what's happening. We don't know what's going on with Corona and all the other stuff, so not a whole lot. Um, are under gravel filters used anymore or obsolete with the sponge filters? Under gravel is kind of obsolete, but they do work still. Um, the efficiency of the under gravel filters are still good. If you choose to use one, generally the concept of an under gravel filter and a sponge filter are about the same. They're air driven. And with the under gravel filter, the gravel is you're going to be your filter media that grows all your bacteria because the water is flowing through the gravel into the under gravel filter. All of the mulm is going to settle under the substrate and under the plastic grating. And then the clean water is going to be brought back up after the bacterial colonies break down the ammonia, it's going to be brought back up to the standpipes and pumped back into the tank uh, with an airlift. Essentially, a sponge filter is the exact same way. The sponge filter holds all your bacteria. The fish poop and mulm is collected by the sponge, and the air current lifts water through the sponge up the standpipe and back into the aquarium. So essentially, they're the same, but sponge filters are a lot easier to clean. So that's why a lot of people are switching over from under gravel filters, which used to be really popular in the 80s and 90s, to sponge filters today, which are much more popular because of the ease of maintenance. Uh, the same thing actually goes for matten filters. It's essentially a sponge filter, but it cuts off the end of the tank and uses a larger area to be the filtration. And they work the same way. Um, but as far as... Power heads being used with those. Um, yeah, you could use a power head for the under gravel filter. You can use a power head on a sponge filter. Um, yeah, yeah, you could use that either way. But personally, if I was to choose one, I would go with the sponge filter just for ease of maintenance, unless you'd be willing to uh, drill the bottom of your tank. You could drill the bottom of your tank with an under gravel filter and install a bulkhead with a, uh, a ball valve. That way all the mulm and everything that collects under it, instead of having to tear the whole tank apart to be able to clean that out, you could actually just open the ball valve on the bottom of the tank and you could do your water changes that way as well as clean all the mulm out of the bottom of the tank. So that's another option if you're willing to do that, but you just have to make sure you don't have a tempered tank because um, if you go to drill that, it'll just blow the bottom right out of it. So definitely something that can be done, but... Totally up to you. Uh, let's see. I know personally I'm trying to phase out of the canisters and hang on backs. Um, and trying to switch over to all air-driven filtration just because of the efficiency of it as well as the cost. 
So sponge filters, you buy a sponge filter for five, six bucks, and the thing's going to last forever, um, as opposed to buying a canister filter, which essentially, <laughs> for me, a canister filter full of uh, biological media is the exact same thing as having a sponge filter with a power head on it. It's essentially the same thing. Um, my favorite fish, species-wise, is the Oranda goldfish, but out of all the fish I have right now, it's probably Sherbert the Red Devil or just all my fancy goldfish combined, so it's kind of split between, split between those. What fish would I like to have? That's a good question. Because, uh, honestly, I have the 300-gallon aquarium, and I'm hopefully... Supposedly, I'm going back to work next week. And that means that I'm not going to have all this extra time to make two to three videos a week and um, do that stuff. So I'm going to be actually cutting back to about one video a week now. So hopefully I'll be able to do uh, next weekend's video is actually the putting together of the 300 gallon um, to finish that build. That way I can actually have that done for when I go back to work. Um, because I don't want to have to deal with that with working and everything. I'll just be too tired to work on it. So hopefully I can get that done. Um, yeah. But what fish would I like to have? I've got the 300 gallons, so I could have probably almost anything. Um, arowana? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of fish out there that are like real big fish that people really enjoy and really like, and it's like, Oh, you gotta have a real big tank to have these fish. And I'm not like super huge on like, oh, like I've gotta have that. So I just kind of I like what I like. So there's no like currently I don't have a um like a unicorn, if you will, like something I have to have. You know, it's like my end goal to have to have this fish. I don't really have one. Um but I'm sure it's someday, you know, I'll have a tank big enough that I can just have whatever. You know, it's be like, yeah, oh, check out this great white shark. Like, you know, just as an example. But I don't have something that I just have to go out and have right now. I'm sure I will someday, though. I kind of want to have, and Dustin's kind of influenced me on this one a little bit. I kind of want to get a red tail catfish. I really do. But um, I don't think. The 300 gallon is big enough for sure, considering that thing's going to get almost the same size. So I would definitely have to custom build something or get a pond of some kind to have a red tail. And then the food bill is going to be more for him than it's going to be for the rest of my tanks. So, you know, it, it all depends. There's lots of stuff. <laughs> um, will I breed the red devils? As long as I get a male and female, I'm going to try, right? And you don't necessarily have to put them together in order to breed them. You can actually get the female in there, get a flat stone, and as long as she's been um, fed well and pampered, she'll lay the eggs, you know, in preparation for a male to come in and fertilize. Um, and then you can actually remove her and then do the same thing with the male, put the male in, and then he'll fertilize the eggs, and then you can just remove the eggs. So it's a possibility. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Your unicorn is more pandamores. Um, actually, something that Tim, who is a subscriber as well as a local aquarium enthusiast um, in our Pennsylvania group, me and him were actually talking about setting up YouTube's largest 
uh, bed of sorority in the 300 gallon. And I thought that was a pretty interesting idea, but I don't know if I would go through with it. Wait until I have a store for a red tail. I also kind of want to get a Fahaka puffer, um, but I need to get a reliable source of snails. And the only reliable source of snails that I know of is me. So <laughs> I would have to be able to breed enough snails so that I could supply the uh, Fahaka puffer with enough food. So it would be between the snails, I'll give them clams on occasion, and then um, frozen shrimp, and then just feed them out like that. So I've got the 125 gallon in the garage, so I mean, that's always a possibility, but I want to make sure I have the food source to actually be able to feed him first, because for many of you guys that don't know, there are only two local fish stores in our area, aside from the chain stores, and I'm not going to go out and spend $4 to $5 per snail from the chain stores to feed a Fahaka pucker. So I want to breed my own, make my own, which I already have a small colony going, so we already got a step in the right direction. And then um, once that's able to be self-sustaining, we're going to get a puffer. So my wife's probably excited and jumping up and down right now, but um, yeah, kind of want to get a Fahaka because they're bigger, um, but we'll see what happens. Yep. <laughs> so I'm probably going to run this stream out to the one hour mark, which means we got about eight minutes left. So anybody have any other questions or anything they want to hear me talk about? That's a good question. Also, Rob, you need to get a tank. I know you don't have one, but you need to get a tank. I got a bunch. I'll give you one. <laughs> um, what fish would I recommend starting with if somebody is new to this? That's a good question. There's actually a lot of fish that you could start off with that are relatively easy, um, but it all depends on what size tank you get. Like if you go out and get like 55 gallon or something like that, or a 40 breeder or something, personally, I would probably recommend getting a, um, a fancy goldfish or something like that, a goldfish of the fancy variety, because they're relatively easy to care for as long as you do the water changes and feed appropriately if you want a smaller planted tank um then i would probably go with live bearers um guppies platies mollies um and start off with that because they're generally very hardy as long as you have hard water and you've got good mineral content they're usually pretty hardy um aside from that zebra danios are a really good option White Cloud Mountain Minnows are a pretty bulletproof option. And White Cloud Mountain Minnows don't even need a heater. They're a temperate cool water fish. So they're really easy to keep. Cherry Barbs are also very easy to keep. Um, so you have a lot of options for somebody who's new coming into this to actually get uh, started with your first aquarium. It's actually a lot easier than people would think. Tips for a tank in full sun living room. Is a UV sterilizer the only way to keep algae blooms out or more frequent water changes? So in a full sun, 
in a full sun room, generally, are you talking about green water? Um, so if you're talking about green water, as far as algae, then that's going to be an imbalance between nutrients and light. So you're obviously in a full lit room. And on average, aquarium lighting, right? This I want to talk about this first. Aquarium lighting on average for a good quality light usually runs 120 par for high lighting, right? So if you go out and buy a top end aquarium light, you're looking like 120 par for like um, a couple of Phoenix uh, Planet 24 sevens, um, your Flugels, and they don't even usually get that high, but 120 is pretty high. And sunlight, direct sunlight, is about 1,200 to 1,400 parts. So that's why you get a lot of imbalance in your aquarium and get green algae with sunlight because the lighting is just so powerful. And because the sunlight's so powerful, if you have any uh, nutrient imbalances, so uh, like high nitrate, high phosphates, and things like that, it'll cause algae blooms. And in order to get those algae blooms down, you have to know what actually causes the algae and the green coloring, and it is uh, phytoplankton. So phytoplankton is what causes the green coloring. It feeds off of the nutrients in the sunlight. So if you want to remove that, you either have to uh, kill it or modify it genetically. So the easiest way to do that is um, by blacking out the tank right, for 7 to 10 days which a lot of people choose not to do that because then you don't get to look at it. and You don't really want to feed too much in there, too, because now you're providing nutrient source for the phytoplankton, but they also need sunlight to be able to um, process those nutrients. So blacking the tank out is going to uh, basically kill it off, and then it'll be able to be taken out by your filter. Um, but if you want to keep something like that in your living room, UV sterilizer is going to be one of the best ways to uh, be able to combat that as well as keep it at bay because a UV sterilizer is actually going to modify the genetics when the phytoplankton passes through the UV light. It's going to modify the genetic coding of it and not allow it to reproduce. So then the filters will actually pick it up that way and it won't be able to reproduce so you won't get more so it'll keep the water clean. There are other options too like using um, barley balls. The phytoplankton will get stuck on the barley and then you can swap that out that way. That's a natural way. There is uh, different chemicals you can use, but I really don't like dumping chemicals in my aquariums. You could use Excel. You could use, like, algae fix products and stuff like that. You could also use Daphnia, depending on what kind of fish you have in your aquarium. You could go buy live Daphnia online and dump them in there, and the Daphnia will actually eat the phytoplankton, and they'll get rid of your green water that way. And then if your fish eat the Daphne, it's a good protein source for them too. So, you know, there's, there's a bunch of ways to do it. But the easiest one, in my opinion, is going to be a UV sterilizer because it's going to work quicker and it's going to be a long-term solution. What do I know about rainbow fish? I'll be ordering some when I get back from vacation for my 75 gallons. Um, Honestly, I've never kept rainbow fish since. Um, but I don't know. I don't want to go ahead and give you any advice on that without actually knowing and having experience on them. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to give you a whole lot of help there. But later on, if you want to message me outside of uh, the live stream, we can go through it a little bit and help you out. All right, guys. So we are coming up on the one hour mark. I'm going to be stopping the live stream. Um, so my wife is yelling merch, so um, I do have a merch store open, so if you guys are interested in that, I know I'm not wearing it right now, but I've got a couple different T-shirts. I've got um, 
the Red Devil shirt. I've got a couple goldfish shirts. I've got my native aquarium fish shirt. Um, I've also got some coffee cups and stuff in there. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, the link is going to be in the description of the video if you guys want to go ahead and check that out. Um, and if you want to get some merch, go ahead and get some merch. Um, I would barge in with the shirt, but it's actually in the laundry because I wore it yesterday. So, oops. Um, but yeah, so I think that is going to be it for the live stream. Thank you guys for watching Trap Fish Aquatics. As always, links are going to be in the description down below. Thank you for coming to the live stream and hanging out with me for an hour. Um, so until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. If I can hit the button.